The following video addresses what precisely is Alt-Analyze and what are its primary capabilities. Alt-Analyze is a tool that's been around for uh, over 10 years now. It originally was designed to work with microarray data, and then it was made compatible with RNA sequencing data. And finally, a number of single-cell RNA-seq tools have been built into it. Uh, over that period, a lot of capabilities have been added to Alt-Analyze. Uh, expanding the repertoire of what you can do with it from performing automated large-scale analyses of FASTQ files, hundreds of FASTQ files, or thousands of FASTQ files, um, to performing very straightforward analyses such as pathway enrichment analyses or making a heat map. Um, so here I just wanted to really step through some of the major capabilities the software are uh, and point you to resources so you can learn more about these. First, there are a few different ways to use Alt Analyze on your machine. One is through the graphical user interface, and the other is through the command line. To use Alt Analyze the graphical inter user interface, click on one of these two Mac or Windows installer options here. The difference between the Mac and Windows installer is the Mac does not come with a pre-built version of R, whereas Windows, the Windows archive comes with a fixed version of R with necessary dependencies installed automatically. The Mac version will try to install R dependencies, but may have issues on some machines depending on the security. Uh, once you've installed these, these GUI-based applications, um, all, all uh, library dependencies exist within these already. You won't need to install anything else, and these will be available to run right away. Uh, command line versions can also be accessed either from GitHub or through pip install. If you've downloaded the uh, Alt Analyze GUI version, once you've extracted it, you simply click on either this green icon here or this white icon alias here, depending on your machine and what preferences are around. Um, Alt Analyze GUI will just start up and will quickly prompt you to download a database, which it will do automatically. So the end user doesn't have to do much. They simply have to select which species they want to download and install. For RNA-seq analyses for some species, you will be prompted to again download another database, which is not a problem. For Affymetrix microarrays for different technologies, you will again be asked to for the program to download several different library dependencies that are specific for those microarray platforms. Again, the program will just ask you to do it. You say yes, it will do it automatically, and you'll be ready to go. Uh, the GUI is quite easy to use, and we'll get back to exactly what are some of the applications later. After you've installed Alt Analyze and its associated databases, you'll be presented with the main menu of the program. In the main menu, can you can select a number of different options. First, you can install different databases. The different gene databases are associated with different ensemble versions, and different ensemble versions are associated with different genome versions, depending on the species. So be cognizant of that. If you've aligned your BAM files, for example, and you're analyzing BAM files that are pre-aligned within Alt Analyze, make sure that the genome version for that ensemble version matches the genome version which you align to. Uh, if you are analyzing RNA-seq anal RNA data, which is the default, simply just continue with the default options here. Um, if you are analyzing single cell RNA sequencing data from 10x genomics, you'll need to select that specific option here. If you are selecting microarray data, for example, Affymetrix, the default will be a very conventional Affymetrix microarray that does not have any special features such as exons or exon-exon junctions. However, there are a number of different exon microarrays and junction microarrays from Affymetrix that are provided. If you select these different platforms and analyze the cell files that were directly provided to you either from a colleague of yours or from Geo, for example, um, these programs will automatically work, download all dependencies, and analyze the data appropriately as long as you uh, select your right groups of patient samples. A number of quality control parameters will be reported for each one of these data sets, and so you can go through and look through these results and say you want to exclude this file because it has poor QC based on a number of different parameters, including junction expression, overall gene expression, exon level expression, um, principal component analysis, and other things that are automatically um, generated in the software for you. For RNA-seq analyses, um, if you simply proceed, there's a number of different options on the next screen. You can process RNA-seq files uh, at the read level. You can process an already uh, pre-processed expression file, for example, a tab-delimited text file uh, with TPM or RPCAM or simply raw count values. 
you can analyze a previously alt, uh, produced alt analyzed uh, interim results file uh, and proceed with it. For example, you may have just performed gene expression analyses before, and now you want to perform splicing analyses. Uh, this will let you basically pick up where you left off. Uh, and there's a number of additional analyses here, which we'll walk through later, that let you work with a number of either raw files you've generated in other tools, perform data visualization analyses with existing alt analyzed results, or perform new data visualizations with simple text files that you've already generated in another tool. Um, I'm just going to start with RNA sequencing reads here. The basic premise here is that here you have an experiment name, so we're going to say cancer is the data set. You can have different types of input files here. So you could start with a BAM set of BAM files that you've aligned in STAR or another tool, for example. You could take TCGA junction files that have been provided to you. Um, there are BED files which are produced by a number of tools, including Alt Analyze, but namely, uh, uh, for example, Top Hat and other tools, I think Splice Map. Um, that you can directly uh, analyze. If there are a folder of these samples with those extensions, the program will analyze them if you simply select this folder option and select those files. You can actually also process FASTQ files directly, and this uses the tool Callisto, developed in Lior Pactor's group, and the associated Callisto license is right here. Uh, this can be paired end data, uh, and as long as there is useful read information, read one versus read two in the file names, the program should be able to identify what the samples are, and appropriately perform pseudo alignment to a reference transcriptome, which the program automatically downloads from Ensemble, uh, and not only perform gene expression analyses, but automatically perform splicing analyses from those FASTQ files. And then here, simply you're selecting a folder which you're going to save your results to. You can run these analyses as either multi-threaded or single-threaded. Mm -hmm. This is useful if you encounter bugs or sometimes multi-threading has conflicts. Um, those are the major options here. If instead you were analyzing single cell RNA sequencing data, let's say 10x genomics data, again, you would select 10x genomics align data from this option in the main menu. You would select process chromium matrix in the following screen. And then you have a number of different options here. Primarily, there are two major sparse matrices results that are produced from a 10x genomics experiment. Uh, these are usually through the, the, cell, uh, the um, cell ranger pipeline. Uh, and these include an MTX file or an H5 file, which is an HDF5 file. Selecting either one of those files, you want to select the filtered file, not the raw file. Uh, we'll let you process those files accordingly, and simply you just need to select the output directory. Similarly, if you were analyzing exon array microarray data, you would simply again select Affymetrix here. You select the exon 1.0 ST array, select continue. Say, select the option for process cell files. And simply, again, give the data set a name. Select the folder that has the cell files. If these were GZ zipped or zipped, you need to decompress them before selecting that folder uh, and selecting the output file. Uh, you shouldn't need to worry about this, this option here. For all of these so-called workflow analyses we've outlined so far, the idea is that you've selected some files, raw files and, or processed expression file or counts file of some type. Um, that you're going to further analyze and identify differences between two or more populations of samples. These populations of samples are usually groups which the analyst knows in advance what they are, for example, cancer and controls. However, in some cases, you don't know what types of populations there are. And this is the case for single cell RNA-seq, or if you wanted to run the same analysis for bulk RNA-seq to see what populations exist, or for example, batch effects within the gene expression data. Um, to do this, uh, after you've selected what type of data set you want in the specific files, you'll be presented with a screen like this. There are a number of options here of different analyses you'd like to you may would be optionally be able to perform. You can select uh, variations of these options to turn some of these off or on. You can include, for example, uh, quantile normalization if you wanted to on the data sets. Usually you would probably would not. Um, sometimes the expression format is going to be scaled data already, where you have, for example, log to adjust data or counts, and so you may need to select that. Um, you're also going to automatically be presented with the option of performing pathway enrichment analysis, but the screen also offers you the option to look for specific differentially expressed genes with different fold cutoffs or raw p-values or adjusted p-value cutoffs. Um, However, when you're presented with a menu where you can assign which groups each sample listed here in your 
your expression file or dire directory of files that you would like to analyze. You can also perform this unsupervised analysis indicated here, which is called this particular algorithm is called ICGS. This is ICGS version two. If you select this option, you don't need to fill in which groups are here. And you'll simply be presented with a menu option here uh, in which you can select different options for analyzing your single cell RNA-seq or bulk RNA-seq data set, which you'd like to identify heterogeneity in. So far, we've been discussing workflow analyses, basically automated analyses. There are you select a number of different options and a number of complex downstream analyses are run sometimes over hours, um, but hopefully much faster than that. There's another alternative in Alt Analyze, which is to analyze result files directly uh, without these larger complex workflows. So from the main menu, if you, uh, after uh, proceeding, you select additional analyses. There are these, these different options in the tool. These include pathway enrichment analyses using the embedded tool Go Elite. These work with simple tab delimited text files to perform simple pathway analyses, but on many different databases, uh, including some more sophisticated analyses where you prune gene ontology or other ontology trees. Uh, in addition, this can analyze a folder of different results at once and compare them with heat maps and networks. You can do these, you perform these dimensionality reduction analyses in which you generate um, PCA plots, UMAP plots, TSNE plots from a selected tab limited text file. You can also store uh, components, PCA component genes, the top uh, distinguishing component genes in a text file when you run these analyses for PCA. You can perform network analyses. Uh, for example, you can take genes of interest or a text file which has genes. You can select what types of interactions, one from which sources. You want to analyze and generate very pretty networks uh, and color your gene expression data onto those networks to explore further hypotheses. You can translate identifiers from one type to another, uh, and this Alt Analyze database has a large number of different uh, uh, data types in its database. And so you can translate from, from many of these to another one if they're supported uh, with compatible uh, identifiers. You can perform these more advanced uh, alignment, cell classification alignment uh, and differential expression analysis, such as cell harmony. Uh, within this tool, and this is using often uh, existing unsupervised clustering results from uh, ICGS2 or other tools such as Surratt. Um, this is a very powerful approach in which you can identify cell population level gene expression differences that may be shared or unique to one population or another. You can visualize your alternative splicing data once it's been preliminarily generated within this tool using sashimi plots, exon level plots. Um, and other views of the data. You can quickly generate Venn diagrams and you can merge text files with each other. So importantly, all of these different options and all of the different GUI options that I've talked about here can be also uh, performed on the command line. And so we're gonna actually step through how you do that now. Alt Analyze features a robust command line interface that can be accessed after installing from the GitHub source code or through pip install. We often recommend using the GitHub source code only because it's the latest version of the software. You can simply from GitHub uh, install the code by downloading a zip file from the program uh, with this download zip option. Uh, Alt Analyze currently is compatible with Python 2.7 and not Python 3. That is a long-term objective of our, our larger group. Um, so you will have to have Python 2.7 installed, which is uh, typically uh, default for the current Mac operating system. After extracting Alt Analyze or installing it through pip install, you can run Alt Analyze from a terminal window on your Mac or PC operating system or Unix. Um, simply open terminal, open a new window. If you've installed with pip install, you can actually just type Alt Analyze. If you just type Alt Analyze and hit return, it will actually run the GUI, which is not what you want in this particular instance. Rather, you would want to run the command line version. And so again, you would type Alt Analyze, enter some command lines, either from the website or that you've uh, manually constructed. In this case, we've designated that the species is mouse. We're going to download a database. So the option is update, update official, the official version of the updates. 
rather than actually in, uh, creating a database from a specific version of Ensemble, which the program can do for a custom version, uh, indicating what Ensemble version we're going to focus on. And so this is going to be uh, version 72, which is already pre-built, uh, and installing additional databases. If you were doing this from uh, within the zip, uh, uh, GitHub extracted uh, zip file, uh, you would type in altanalyze.py, um, enter the same command. Uh, so this is the only really difference between those two options. So if you wanted to know where you would actually get all the different command line option examples, you can do this from the uh, wiki. And so there's a direct link to a read the docs wiki version here. Uh, and there's a, and a wiki also on the GitHub repository. Uh, which is present under wiki here. And simply by going to wiki, you can sim do perform a simple search. Uh, for example, command line mode. Uh, and this will bring up a number of different options uh, in, and instructions for actually running alt analyze, similar to what we just talked about right now. Uh, so these are a number of example options for running uh, different functions on the command line. Here's installing the database, which is the command we just entered there. Here's you would, how you would analyze fast Q files and perform an unsupervised analysis with the software ICGS uh, by pointing the software to a directory of fast Q files. Uh, and actually, in this case, uh, this is combining two different options where it's actually running Callisto uh, on a bunch of fast Q files. Uh, before it performs the unsupervised analysis. Uh, you can perform a similar analysis from BAM files. Uh, in this case, we're actually comparing different groups, and so you have this preset uh, groups file and comparison file uh, in which you're indicating uh, what your samples to group relationships are and your comparisons are. Uh, there's more information about that in the wiki and readmes. Uh, you can analyze Affymetrix uh, data similar with similar commands indicating what platform you're using. In this case, it's a three prime array versus RNA-seq. Um, you can analyze already existing TPM files using similar commands. Um, you can analyze um, a 10x genomic sparse matrix file uh, just by pointing it with this option, chromium sparse matrix, to the H5 file or MTX file. Uh, there are specific options, additional options that are highlighted here that you can run when you're running ICGS. For example, you can indicate uh, the target set of clusters that you should force it to identify rather than the program identifying the target number of clusters itself, um, how many cells to downsample to, the number of variable genes that it should, should identify uh, in the downsampling step, and the number of expressed genes when you're performing uh, the quality control step. Um, you can also, there are specific commands here for generating custom UMAPs. Uh, in this case, we're generating a UMAP with custom genes. Uh, so it's visual, making separate plots, visualizing the expression level of each of these genes on a separate file. Uh, you can make a custom heat map, again, which you're basically identifying, you're, you're generating heat map with uh, displaying biomarkers. Uh, and the biomarkers are basically a database of gene sets for uh, different cell types in terms of the top markers. And so you're going to visualize that on the left of the heat map and you're going to visualize just these genes on the right of the heat map. Uh, and there's additional uh, options for the heat generating heat maps in the software. There's actually a number of different parameters for generating heat maps, custom heat maps in the software. Uh, in this case, basically identifying um, uh, additional genes of the heat map that are correlated or anti-correlated to this target gene. Um, there's additional links here for these different functions within the software. And if you ever have any questions, please contact uh, the folks at Alt Analyze, and they should be able to help you out, or post an issue here uh, within the, the GitHub um, uh, issues list here. Thank you again. Uh, hope you have a good day.